Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this episode, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from Patreon.com. You can join and receive mail from my desk or from my Disneyland trips. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Joe Gamble, Scott Booker, Monica Seats Vega, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Scott Cagle, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons serious inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Grace Coat, Ben and Noel Bruning, Patty Wollen, Angela Reynolds, and Aaron Moran. B ticket patrons, the Disney Rewind Podcast, Jeff and Paige Orton, and Joshua, and Exorable Tosh Bell. And the A ticket patrons, Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, Angel Nablah, and and the All Aboard Podcast. You can also sign up for my new newsletter for a chance to get some postcards delivered by the USPS to your mailbox. I am your host, your post host, Clocky. And today, we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has Sleeping Beauty Castle. To the right, you can see the majestic Matterhorn. On the bottom of the card, you can see pink roses growing around the moat and guests walking over the drawbridge. On the back it reads, Sleeping Beauty's Enchanted Castle stands guard over the entrance to Fantasyland, sharing the skyline with Disneyland Matterhorn. It's postmarked August 11th, 1961, with a Buena Park Ghost Town cancel and a three-cent Purple Liberty postage stamp, Scott number 1035. I assume they visited the park on Thursday, August 10th, 1961, when park hours were from 9 a.m. to midnight. The weather was a high of 84 and a low of 63. Park attendance that day was 32,375. It's addressed to a Mr. Kenneth Hansen of Castro Valley, California. It reads, August 10th. Dear Kenny, I'm sure you recognize this. I'm here with several friends. One boy is just about your age. We've gone on a lot of rides and still have some in our books to go on. Love, Aunt Verna. This week's Imagineer is Yale Gracie. Yale was born on September 3, 1910 in Shanghai, China. He was the son of a U.S. Marshal and diplomat and grew up traveling the world, from China to Mexico to Spain to the United Kingdom. Yale studied art at a San Francisco art school and the Art Center School of Design in Los Angeles. He began working for the Disney Company as a layout artist for Pinocchio and Fantasia and continued working on Disney shorts through the 1940s and 1950s. Yale continued to go to art school at the Art Institute of Chicago, the University of Southern California, and the Chouinard Art Institute. Walt Disney connected with Yale Gracie after noticing that his office was filled with miniatures. Walt also collected and created miniatures as a hobby. Walt then moved Yale from the animation department to Imagineering. His early work with the department was mostly research and development. In 1959, he worked with Raleigh Crump to refresh some of the Fantasyland dark rides. This included updating the barrel gags in Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, creating an endless pouring effect from the Mad Hatter's teapot, and a volcano and campfire effect to Neverland in Peter Pan's flight. After fixing Fantasyland attractions, Raleigh and Yale were paired together to work on the Haunted Mansion. Growing up, Yale read boy mechanic books, and as an adult, continued to read popular mechanic books, and had a hobby of learning magic and illusions. On occasion, Yale would have an idea that didn't quite fit an attraction, and the idea would be shelved and possibly used later. He was given an official role with Imagineering in 1961 for special effects and as a lighting artist. Other Imagineers called him the Gadgeteer or Illusioneer, as he was always tinkering to make new effects and illusions. One illusion that he created for the 1964 New York World's Fair attraction, the Carousel of Progress, was a glimmering pixie dust effect as the only light source in a dark theater, using an early form of projection mapping. The same effect was later used on Space Mountain. Great news, Enfield Post is back up on Etsy. Grabbing some vintage stamps is a great way to plus your mail. Whether you're trying to match the color of your postcard or envelope, or adding a theme stamp to the back of your mail, be sure to check out Enfield Post. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D. 
P-O-S-T, on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has Goofy leaning against a lamppost. In the background, you can see Sleeping Beauty Castle. And written on the front of the postcard is Goofy About Disneyland in yellow and red lettering. On the back it reads, Goofy in Disneyland. Where to start his tour of Disneyland's many adventures is a problem confronting Goofy as he pauses in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. It's postmarked September 18, 1975, with a San Francisco always use zip code cancel and two postage stamps, a five-cent blue Washington postage stamp, Scott number 1283, and a three-cent purple Francis Parkman American Historian postage stamp, Scott number 1281. I assume they visit the park on Wednesday, September 17, 1975, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weather was a high of 93 and a low of 62. It's addressed to Miss Ruth Schofield of Gorst, Washington. It reads, Mom, made it to L.A. on Monday. We went to Knott's Berry Farm today. It was a nice place. The weather is about 90 degrees. Not bad for L.A. We talked to Ed yesterday. We talked for about 10 minutes. It felt good. Love, Steve. After the World's Fair, more focus was put on the two New Orleans Square attractions, the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yale's work on Pirates of the Caribbean included all this special effects fire at the end of the attraction. There's an iconic story when Yale and the other Imagineers rode the attraction with the Anaheim Fire Department chief. The fire chief was concerned about the real fire he saw on the attraction. Yale assured him that the fire was created with special effects using fans, lights, and colored mylar material. In regard to the Haunted Mansion, he's best known for implementing the Pepper's Ghost effect. This was an old Victorian theatrical effect Yale had read about in one of his books. The effect is mostly used for the ballroom scene in the Haunted Mansion. After the opening of the Haunted Mansion, Yale was asked to assist Raleigh with improving the exterior lighting of Disneyland. Working with the park's electricians, he added color and new lights to plus the look of Main Street, Tomorrowland, and Fantasyland. Outside of Disney Imagineering, Yale did one project for the La Brea Tar Pits using the Pepper's Ghost effect for a saber-toothed tiger exhibit. He retired from Imagineering in 1975. There's a window dedicated to him in Florida on Main Street in the Magic Kingdom, and he was made a Disney legend in 1999. His last name, Gracie, is used in conjunction with the Haunted Mansion as a family name which owned the mansion. Yale died from an unexpected attack on September 5, 1983 while asleep, and it remains, to this day, an unsolved case. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learn about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has an illustration of the Mad Tea Party from the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. You can see Alice in a pink dress with a white pinafore sitting in a wingback chair at the head of the table. Next to her is a March Hare wearing a bow tie and a purple jacket, the Dormouse sleeping with his head on the table, and the Mad Hatter in a pink suit with a black top hat, grinning and holding a teacup in his left hand and a book in his right. There's a row of empty chairs and place settings for at least 11 guests. It's postmarked May 8, 2023, with a San Jose cancel and a Puppy and Heart Love Forever postage stamp, Scott number 5746. It reads, 5823. Hello, Clocky. Greetings from Monterey, California. I am one of the few people who are not interested in theme parks. The crowds make me anxious. I wish I could travel in time and go to Disneyland in the 1950s or even the 1970s. I do love the old hand-drawn Disney movies. Actually, I love all of the old Disney movies. I would be interested in checking out your podcast. Cheers, Heather. Thank you so much for the postcard, Heather. I wish I could travel back in time and check out Disneyland in the 1950s and 1970s. Sometimes, through doing this podcast, 
and looking through old photos and maps, I kind of take a stroll through what Disneyland was like before I was able to go. I also really enjoyed this Alice postcard. I have a pretty big collection of Alice in Wonderland books, art, and other collectibles. I've never seen this artist's depiction of the Mad Tea Party before. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would be awesome to share your favorite episode. There are over 100 episodes to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sentfromdisneyland or on Twitter at sentfromdisney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard address to sent from Disneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guest of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. 